Hey y'all, I want to do this video real quick. Just got off work, today's Friday. Um, and uh, uh, I want to invite you, uh, you, those of you, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, you know, you, sometimes we have joined together in fasting and prayer. But uh, uh, I invite you to join together with me. I'm going to fast uh, from sundown today, Friday, to sundown Sunday, two complete days. I'm going to go without water and without any liquids or food. I've, I've, and that's not a problem. I've been four days without uh, any liquids before. Uh, and, and much longer than that without food. But it's about crucifying the flesh, showing the Lord I, I need a father, son, sit down, a, a, a greater encounter with my Lord God and Savior. And uh, uh, I want to show you a picture of something, okay? I mean, we, we are in the last days, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Uh, it's, it's that simple. I'm trying to hold this phone, so hope I don't lose this video. But I want you to look at this picture I'm showing on the computer. I'm going to turn it around here in a minute. On Glamour Magazine, okay, on the cover of Glamour Magazine, a trans-pregnant proud is, is called trans pregnant proud in other words they the, the the lgbt community calls june the, the gay pride month a lot of gay pride parades and festivals i've preached at some of them uh uh like say uh, been harassed by cops got put in jail or taken to jail in chattanooga when i was preaching at a drag queen uh event you know, they had to, judge had to dismiss the case because I had to write a freedom of speech on the public sidewalk. But anyway, I'm going to turn this phone around. I want you to look at this picture. Can y'all see that picture? Right there. That's a pregnant transgender, which we know a transgender can't get pregnant. Okay. But that's what that is. Uh. Uh, can you believe that, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe it? I tell you, this is some interesting times we live in today. Okay? Tell you a little bit about my day. So, uh, I had a shirt on y yesterday uh, at work that said, I dare you to ask me about Jesus. Uh, and uh, so a guy was coming into this restaurant near where I was working on, on the, a, a building my boss owns. And he spoke to me on his way in. He, I was outside doing some painting. He said, I really like that shirt you had on yesterday. And uh, the Lord laid on my heart to get in the conversation with people about the Lord. And if you're spiritually minded, that's what you want to do. Be about the Father's business. So I said, yeah, a lot of people, uh, you know, say they love Jesus. When I asked him if he loved Jesus, he said, yeah. And uh, I said, well, so many people say they love Jesus, but they don't obey Jesus. So then the conversation got going. So uh, somehow he ended up saying, well, I, I don't believe some, I don't believe you can lose your salvation and all this. Uh, and uh, I said, well, I grew up a Baptist and I was taught you can't lose your salvation. I was taught it was only by faith. And, uh, and he went on, was trying to say, you can't lose your salvation, and and and, and uh, it's it's only by faith. So I started quoting scriptures to this man, and uh, he kept interrupting. I said, "Sir, I'm I'm I'm. It's it's not my belief or opinion. It's what the Word of God says." I said, "Why do you keep interrupting me? I'm giving you scriptures that clearly show that you're wrong." Okay, and I said, "You, I I, I said in love. I said, sir, I say this." As, in love as kind as I can you've been deceived and uh and uh he didn't tell me he was a Baptist at the time he didn't want to say I because uh 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 he got mad kind of got mad went on in the restaurant said I'm done talking then he came out and apologized and uh I said no problem I said I'm, unfortunately I'm used to you know people when I you know start sharing the word of God and they don't agree with you know 
their belief system don't agree. Uh, you know, I, I'm just used to this. I said it really breaks my heart that I try to quote the Word of God to people, uh, and, uh, and and they interrupt, and they don't want to hear it if it goes against what they believe. And uh, so anyway, he told me. I, uh, I I said I said what 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 church what kind of church do you go to, sir? He said, well, it don't matter. Okay. I said, well, your pride don't want to tell me. I mean, you know, what's wrong with telling me? So he finally says Baptist. I knew he didn't want to tell me because he he knew that uh, I had originally told him I was raised a Baptist and I uh, I was deceived. Uh, so anyway, he ends up calling me a false preacher. Okay. I said, sir, I've just all I've done is quoted the word of God to you. I tried to. You interrupt me. You know, I've talked to preachers on the phone, like the preacher at this church my son Levi goes to, uh, and uh, uh, I had I had I had to struggle to get the word of God in with him as well about the once saved always saved, or as they say it. I, uh, uh, you know, you're not saved until you're dead, ladies and gentlemen. And the Lord says, "Job well done," but that's what they call it. So I'm speaking their terminology. It really should be. Uh, once born again, you can't ever lose your salvation, which is a lie from from the pits of hell. The Bible clearly says uh, uh, many scriptures say that you can, and I'm not going to get into them right now. I, there's a video there for you to listen to the scriptures. And then um, later on in the day, uh, these two ladies drive up in their car to get, uh, you know, this place sells a lot of pizza. And, uh, uh, you know the music was really blaring, and and uh, he's a uh, lady came out. I said, "Ma'am, uh, you got a minute? I want to ask you a question." So she got in the car, and and they drove up to where I was working, uh, you know, about fifty feet or so. And uh, I said, "Do y'all love Jesus?" She had, had a window down. It's two ladies, and uh, they both said yes. I said. Uh, What's the greatest commandment? Well, you know, so many people, they don't know. They just say, love the Lord with all your heart. So I, I, I helped them along. And, uh, and, and I said, and, and with all your mind, the Lord said, the greatest commandment, okay? And to do unto others, you'd have them doing to you. Uh, so, so, then I, I, so then I asked them, I said, do you believe this music glorifies God? Do you believe the Lord would want you to listen to this music? Okay, It was some wild, crazy rap music. I could hear it uh, from where I was working. The, the, the woman had it up really loud. So the, the woman on the passenger side, uh, it's the one I originally started talking to, she said, no, it don't glorify God. And uh, I said, well, you're going to have to make your mind up. Uh, are you going to quit listening to it? Because you said you love the Lord. Uh, so Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my words. And the greatest commandment is to love him with all your heart and all your mind. I said, you know, the Lord convicted me of uh, all my worldly music uh, before he put his Holy Spirit in me. And uh, I trashed it all. She said, wow. And uh, so I say that to say, ladies and gentlemen, it's a struggle out there. So many people are deceived and delusional. Uh, uh, am I am I the only one that sees this, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, uh, I'm, leave me some comments. Okay, uh, you you know when 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 you preach in the narrow and straight path, and few there be that find it. Without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. He that finds his life in this life shall lose it. Uh, he that loves father, mother, brother, sister, son, or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Uh, 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 is not worthy to be my disciple. And these scriptures that we don't ever hear about, okay, uh, from most preachers or so-called Christians, okay. Uh, you know, when you when your voice and your message that God's given me, for example, uh, and if, if any of you listen to this video, the Lord showed you these things. Uh, you know, I'm outnumbered. Don't you? You know, when you're so overwhelmingly outnumbered, uh, which is the case, you know, people just go ahead and buy into that fake gospel. You know, 
I've never said, shared this with y'all, but my wife said something to me uh, when she had walked away from me before she actually divorced me that was so hurtful. And, uh, and I was nice and kind and after she said it, and I was, it didn't really soak in until uh, like a, the next day and even after that, uh, how, how horrible and evil and terrible a thing it was she said. She said, she's, I'm quoting my wife uh, that left me after 41 and a half years. Okay. Uh, she said, something's happened to you from your childhood and no one, no man, no one can help you. In other words, there's no help for me. You know, you know the Lord showed me why she said that? First of all, there's, there's multiple reasons. Preaching the narrow and straight path. I'd asked her what got this all started is I asked her to message our son that has this child out of wedlock that was unrepentant and, and uh, just wanted me to celebrate and ignore the way he's living. Ignore what uh, this child uh, is coming to this world with uh, this way and the, the, the kind of witness that, that, it, that it is to the child. And, uh, 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 you know, I'd, sh I'd ask her, the, uh, the Lord actually spoke to me and I said, ask your wife to message your son uh, and say, maybe if you approached your dad in a different way, look, saw how he looks at things and wants you to serve God, da, da, da. Uh, and, uh, and say something good about your husband. My son was cursing me uh, uh, in, in this group family text. The Lord literally spoke to me and asked me to ask my wife to do that uh, because the Lord actually knew more than I did about, about what was going on. He, he was testing her to see if she loved her husband more than she loved her son because she had redid her vows. Uh, 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 and I, six months before this, asked her, do you love me more than our children? And she finally said yes. But, but then she, just, she proved she didn't because she wouldn't send that message. Well, the Lord uh, th that night asked, showed me the scriptures in Ephesians about wives submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord and everything and said, God literally spoke to me, ladies and gentlemen, and zeroed out my mind and said, well, if she don't love you enough to send a message, ask her, show her these scriptures and, 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 and ask her to, uh, uh, you love God enough, this is God's word, send a message because you love God. So I showed her the scriptures and uh, she, she said she still wasn't going to send it. I said, so do you believe you obey in those scriptures? She actually said yes. And her husband just asked her to send a message to our son of wisdom, of love, uh, to, 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 to calm him down, to try to get him to stop being so selfish uh, uh, and, and think about where his father's coming from. Uh, with him fornicating and the lifestyle that he's been living and now he's got a child out of wedlock. So I reckon she, uh, there's multiple things. She, she, she says something must have happened to me from my childhood. Like, I, 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 you know, God asked me to ask her to send the message. The Lord asked me to show her the scriptures about why I'm submitting. So she don't, she don't understand it. She don't understand it. I reckon something happened to me from, and that would, that's just so hurtful though, ladies and gentlemen, for your wife to tell you something and no one can help you. But anyway, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a wild world we live in. You saw the picture of, of transgender, we got gay preachers, uh, we got most preachers in the church preaching a broad path. Uh, tell me they love Jesus. And 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 and, and uh, 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 they admit they have sin in their life, like this man said today. Uh, uh, church going like my wife runs to a church that she knows will will, will tickle her ears and and, and uh, not preach the narrow and straight path and files for divorce, sitting in a quote unquote house of God. Okay, and this this brand was a church of God, which is which which is uh, getting more diluted and compromised by the day. Okay. But anyway, y'all, 
crazy world we live in. Uh, uh, don't let the world desensitize you. Uh, leave me a comment. Do you feel outnumbered? You know, the Lord showed me years ago trying to raise my children, you know, uh, didn't, wouldn't let them listen to worldly music. Uh, wouldn't let them go if their friends wanted to go to, to a movie. Didn't let them go to the, I call it the movie house, Satan's temple. Okay. But it's actually now really what's becoming Satan's temple is most so-called churches. That's the truth, y'all. Okay. You look at, there's so many churches in, 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 in this country. It's, it's shocking. But, but look at how much sin is in this country. Look at, I mean, I look at all these people that tell me they love God. They listen to music. They, they know God wouldn't listen. And you know, one reason Satan hates me, you know, one reason he hates us all, but he really hates me and he really worked to get my wife to leave me. And I'm, I'm praying God's uh, chastening and judgment will turn her around. I don't want God to bring judgment on her. But, but the fact of the matter is she deserves it. She needs it uh, uh, for, for the sake of her soul. Okay, literally. Uh, the Lord says he chastens those whom he loves. He says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God when you willfully sin and salt in the spirit of grace, etc., etc. Uh, anyway, y'all, uh, uh, hang in there. And I, I, I'm, I'm talking to myself, okay? I'm, and I'm trying to encourage anybody of you listening to this video that may be like me. Hang in there. Uh, like my friend told me, uh, faint not. And, uh, uh, but uh, it, it's, 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 it's something. It, it's, it's, it, it's really sad, but uh, I'm praying and I'm going to be praying and fasting for the next two days and for a, 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 a new encounter with the Lord, a sit down, refreshing in the Lord. Uh, but anyway, I love y'all. Uh, uh, hope you take to heart what I've shared with you. Stay in the Word. Don't be a friend of this world. God's Word said to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. God's Word says, uh, 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 walk as He walked. Okay? I was sharing scriptures with that man today. He was talking about, uh, you, you know, we all have sin in our life. I said, well, sir, I don't knowingly have sin in my life. If I knew I had sin in my life, I, I'd get right with God in a heartbeat. Okay. Uh, that's, that's where I'm at with God. That's my heart. I want to please my father God. Okay. But when you've been deceived and brainwashed by false preaching and the scriptures unrightly divided, you, you can have a little sin in your life. Okay. According to them and not... Not feel so bad about it. You can go to church, divorce your God-fearing husband. Uh, uh, you can fornicate, uh, have sex outside of marriage. You can dress ungodly and in your tight leggings and your tight pants. And, uh, and it's just crazy world. It's unbelievable. The Lord's coming back real soon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, I've had two visions in my lifetime of him coming back in my lifetime. And I'll share something with you that I find real interesting. In one of those visions, I was going around a real curvy road in the mountains. This, this was many years ago, ladies and gentlemen. And I find it interesting where the property is, where my RV is. Uh, uh, the road, that road right there is very, very curvy. It was just like, it, I, I'm not making this up, it was just like the road in the vision I had many years ago and I the Lord spoke to me and said look up and I looked up I, you know being on the driver's side I looked up out to my left and this tremendously bright glorious brightness uh, I saw in the sky was the Lord returning okay and uh, anyway it's, it's interesting stuff but let's draw nearer to God ladies and gentlemen let's, let's, let's seek for the Lord to use us and, 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 and destroy the works of the devil uh, uh, for him to use us to destroy the works of the devil. You know, that Satan hates it when you share things with people like I did today. I do this all the time. And like this lady said, she loved the Lord and, I, and she admits the Lord wouldn't listen to that music. Uh, you know, just rubber meets the road type conversations down to earth. You know, 
Uh, people are afraid to ask questions. People don't want to offend anybody. People are ashamed. Uh, but, but, you know, God told Ezekiel, tell the righteous man to continue in his righteousness. And if he commits sin, uh, I'll remember none of the righteousness which he has committed. And he shall die thereby. Okay, tell the wicked man to turn from all his wicked ways and do that which is right and he shall live thereby. I remember none of the wickedness which he has committed. And here's the catcher, ladies and gentlemen. God told Ezekiel, if you don't tell them that and they die, their blood will be on your hands. That's serious stuff, ladies and gentlemen. So, so if we love our fellow man and we know the truth, we need to be sharing the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? We need to be sharing the truth. We need to be willing to be persecuted. Your Bible says, for all those that live godly uh, uh, shall suffer for Christ's sake. Jesus said you will be persecuted for righteousness' sake. Uh, he said they will hate you, but they hated me before they hated you. So we got to go through it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the narrow and straight path I'm talking to you about. But I love you. Appreciate you. Draw near to God. Have a good day.